Hey guys, ModsLink here with another tutorial. Today I wanted to show you how to do a hard mod on your Nintendo 3DS. So a hard mod will allow you to downgrade your console if you accidentally update it to a higher firmware. So in order to do this, you're going to need your Nintendo 3DS. You're going to need a small electronic screwdriver set. You're going to need some scissors. You will also need a micro SD adapter like this, and this is what it's going to look like after you take it apart. You're going to need a micro USB port. You're also going to need an SD card reader, and you will need a micro USB cable. Additionally, you will need wires, and you will need solder and a soldering iron. You will also need a hot glue gun. So first off, We'll go ahead and use this cable and get the cable ready. So get your micro SD adapter. Use your fingernail to pry it apart. And then you will see these pins inside. Now some of these pins can be removed. So just to make things easier and so you don't bridge the points, go ahead and remove the first point if you're using a 3DS XL like me. This one is not needed. Now the second and third and fourth point are needed, so leave those alone and skip to the fifth point and you can remove that one. And you just bend it back and forth until it breaks. Now the next one is needed and the last two over here are not needed, so you can remove these two as well. And you should end up with something that looks like this. So you should have pin number 2, 3, 4, and 6 left on your micro SD card reader. Next you will need your micro USB cable and just cut this end off. Inside this cable there's four different wires which we're going to use to solder onto the micro SD card. So cut it here and strip the wires so you can expose the single wires inside. And depending on your cable you may have some shielding around like this. The shielding is not important so just move it over to the side and you can cut it off. Inside you should find four different wires. Typically one is red, one's black, one's green, and one is white. Now on your SD card adapter, micro SD card adapter, first off, the first pin is going to go to the red wire, the second pin is going to go to the black wire, the third pin is going to go to the white wire, and then the last pin will go to the green wire. So go ahead and solder this. I'm not going to show you here, but you get the point. Again, that's red, black, white, and then green. Once you're done, you should end up with something that looks like this. Again, that's red, black, white, and then green. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and put the cover back on if you didn't completely ruin it. Otherwise, just put some tape over the wires to hold it in place and then you can simply insert this into your SD card reader. Set this aside, you're done with this part. Now we need to get to the 3DS. Now make sure your 3DS is turned off, make sure you've removed any games and make sure you also remove the SD card on the side. Now you will need a Philips triple zero size bit. You can also use a double zero, but a triple zero is recommended as a double zero might strip the screws on the 3DS and then you'll never be able to put it back together. Start off with these two back screws. Once you've loosened these two up, you should be able to get under this plate either with a fingernail or with 
something small like a credit card. Here I'm using my tweezers to pop the side and then you can simply pry this back cover off. Once you've done that, remove the battery so you don't short anything out. Now there's two hidden screws under these little rubber pads. And there's a small one right here. Go ahead and remove this small one first. Then remove the two that are hidden right here. And next you will have two up here and two down here. Remove all four of those. Now here, one of my screws got stripped as I mentioned previously, so I had to drill it out, which is why I didn't remove that last one. Once you have done that, you can lift this back cover from the front of the 3DS towards the back. Be very careful as there's a couple of ribbon cables underneath, as you can see here. And these ribbon cables are the ones for the L and R triggers. Now the points that we need to get to are these three right here, next to the NAND chip. And we also need to get to this one over here, which is the ground point. Now get your micro USB port and you'll notice there's five pins on it. I will also have a picture in the video to show you which pins need to be soldered to what. Essentially, you need to solder pin 1, 2, 3, skip 4, and then solder to 5. So go ahead and do that. Now, once you've soldered the wires, you should end up with something that looks like this. Now, we need to get this port installed. So this is the easiest spot to install it at. There's these little wrist strap holder things, and you can just pop one out, and we'll put the port right here. So to avoid breaking your contacts, because they're very, very small, hold the end of the cables like this and route them through the outside of the casing towards the inside. And then slowly pull the port through. Be very careful in this part because you don't want to break the contacts that you just soldered. Once you get to this point here, you can slowly push the port through with your finger. You might also have these very small tabs on the side of the port that you need to bend down. Once you've bent those tabs down, you can slowly wiggle the port inside while making sure not to break any of the wires you soldered. Now after you've got the port in, you need to use your hot glue gun and just douse the port with some hot glue. Also make sure to check your points to make sure they're not bridged or anything like that. Once you're done, your port should look something like this so it's secure and you can move the wires around without worrying about them breaking on the port. Now you need to get these wires soldered according to the diagram on the screen right now. So once you're done you should end up with something that looks kind of like this. So this first point, the red cable, should be going up to the top point up here. This one at the bottom, the white one should be going to the third point. The one in the middle is the green point, which is the third point on the USB cable. And the blue point, the last one, should be going over to the ground point. Now to test it out, go ahead and reconnect the ribbon cables at the top of the casing. And put the casing back on. and get your battery and put that back in. You will also want to get your SD card so your console boots up like normal. Now first power it on just like normal and make sure it still turns on. Once you've verified that the console works like normal 
power it back off. Now get the cable that we created previously and make sure it's plugged into your SD card reader and plug the other end into the port that we just installed on the console. Now once you have your cable plugged in and make sure it's secure in there, try to plug it in a couple of times just to make sure it fits in securely. And make sure you don't have your SD card reader plugged into a computer yet. Power the console on and you should see this blue screen. If you see this blue screen, that means you installed your port successfully and you should now be able to read and write to your NAND using your SD card reader. To turn the console off, just go ahead and press and hold the power button for a few seconds and then the console will turn off. Now to turn the console back on like normal, just unplug the cable and turn it on. Now I would suggest you test this cable out a few times just to make sure everything works properly. Now I do have to warn you, do not ever plug in a normal USB cable into this console. If you plug a normal USB cable or micro USB cable into the console, you will run a current to the NAND and you will end up frying the NAND. If you end up frying the NAND, your console is fully bricked. There is no way to restore it. There is no way to connect to the NAND, even using something like a Raspberry Pi. So make sure you don't ever do that. Now, just for reassembly purposes, go ahead and put all the screws back in place. then put the top shell back on. We we'll want to latch it on from the bottom and then snap it in place and then put the screws back in. And that is it. Your console is now hard modded. So if you ever update it to a higher firmware, such as 11.2, you can easily downgrade it back to 9.2 or any exploitable firmware. And that is it for this tutorial. If you guys found it helpful or informative, Please remember to like, comment, favorite, or share the video. Consider subscribing as well for future tutorials such as this one. If you need any of the parts used in this video, links will be down in the video's description. And if you're interested in getting this mod done to your 2DS, 3DS, 3DS XL, new 3DS, or new 3DS XL, send me an email over to sales at modslink.com. Once again, Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.